you mean everything to Christ. And Christ means everything to me. And I called on the Lord. I said, Lord, the Father, this is real. Will you watch over me? Will you raise him up to be strong? I don't I, I'm just a man with flesh. This is what you call for in your scriptures. You said they wore studs and fringes, they got it on. You said they don't follow the law, they doing it. You said under your house shot, they ought to love one another. And they doing it. Damn right, hey, Shalom, Shalom, DC. With the ISUPK, the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, started out of 1 West, 125th Street, Hall of New York, under commanding General Yohanna. You understand, since 1969, we've been teaching the truth according to the Bible that so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Indians are the true Jews, the true Israelites of the Bible, and that the oppressor is the devil the Bible speaks of. And ever since we've been bringing out this truth, they call us what? They say, Oh, you a hate group. You a hate group. Let me tell you something. That's a, that's a damn lie. The ISUPK or the Commanding General Yohanna is not a hate group. You understand? We love our people, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. You know who the real hate group is? America is a hate group. The NYPD is a hate group. DCPD is a hate group. You understand? All of your, all of your different organizations in this place called America, that's the real hate group according to the Bible. And I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it according to these scriptures. Give me Exodus uh, chapter 15 and verse 3. And the number one hate group is the goddamn Christian church. That's the number one hate group out there. Every person you've ever met in your life who got molested or touched or raped or abused in some fashion was abused by some filthy Christian. You know it's true. That's the real hate group. Why? Because guess what? Hate is not what you learned about in the Christian church. You think you love everybody because you want to kiss and hug all the time. But real hate, real love is guess what? Separating from the oppressor. Real love is teaching black people to not join their enemies. Real love is teaching Hispanics and Native American Indians to not join the people that's destroying them. Give me Exodus 15 and 3. You got it, brother? We're going to read the truth of the Bible, man. They told you that God loved everybody and he was a unicorn in the sky that kissed on little babies. Let's read what the Bible says. Read. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 3. Read. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, who you call God, in the ISUPK, we call him by his, his real name in Hebrew, which is Yahweh. You understand? That's what the Lord's name is. So who you call God, the Lord, go ahead. The Lord is a man of war, a man of what? War, hugs and kisses, war, rainbows, war, skittles, war, LGBTQ, war. The Bible said that the Lord is a man of war, you understand? So when you see the ISUPK, what they say, what, what do Waka Blocker say? He said, y'all too militant. Y'all just too angry and, and just too, there's a reason for it. There's a reason why we talk how we talk. Why we operate how we operate. Because we're doing what the Most High told us to do. Because the Lord is what? It's a man of war. Read. And the Lord is his name. It says, Yahweh is his name. You understand? He's supposed to be warriors in his place. And we in spiritual warfare, man. We in spiritual warfare against the principalities of this place. You know why the Christian church tells you to love everybody? So you can be a better slave. So you can be a better slave. When you love everybody and think it's all fun and, 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 and we just all one big melting pot. That's what they say, right brother? Don't you do? You just lay down. You lay down and you hug on and you kiss on your oppressor. You believe everything he says. When he's the devil the Bible speaks of, you understand? The Lord is a man of war. And if you want to be like the Lord, guess what you got to be? A man of war. Drop that. Give me first address 8 and 85. You understand? First address, the 8th chapter, the 85th verse. They tell you to love on everybody because why? Because America wants a black man to be a docile, soft, non-threatening individual. They don't want you to be, be militant and be strong. Because guess what? If you're militant and strong, you will never sell drugs to another black man. You will never sell drugs to a black, Hispanic, or Native Indian woman. You think selling drugs is strong? You think selling drugs, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and buying drugs and being a drug addict and a drug dealer makes us strong in this place? No, it makes us weak in this place, black man. Hispanic and Native Indian man. 
celebrating Christmas and Thanksgiving, you think that makes us strong? That makes us weak in this place. And these oppressors laugh at us. You got that, brother? Read. It's the book of First Edges, chapter 8, verse 85. Read. Moreover, ye shall never seek to have peace with them. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, brother. Now, I went to the Christian church all my life, and they told me that you got to be at peace, peace, peace all the time like a hippie. You got to throw up the peace sign, you understand, and, and, and walk around loving on everybody, which sounds effeminate like I don't know what, brother. If a brother, if a man came down right here, right now, on the corner of 7th and 8th, and said, I'm giving out free hugs, everybody, everybody come hug on me, people would be like, yo, back up. They would tell him to back up, but then they say Jesus Christ was giving out hugs and loved on everybody. Right. Somebody lying. Something ain't adding up. Why? This Bible is not about loving and kissing and being friends with everybody. This Bible is about blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians being better than everybody else on the planet Earth. Right. That's what this Bible is about. Right. Read it from the top, brother. It's the book of First Edges, chapter 8, verse 85. Moreover, Ye shall never. No, you shall sometimes. Ye shall never. Every now and then. Ye shall never. The Bible said never. That means don't do it. Read. Ye shall never seek to have peace with them. Ye shall never seek to have peace with them. You cannot celebrate their Christmas. You cannot celebrate their Father's Day. We cannot celebrate their Mother's Day and their nasty Thanksgiving, man. We cannot do the things that America does. We cannot join America's military. We cannot join America's police force. Why? So we can go out and destroy each other some more, hate on one another some more, sell more drugs to one another, prostitute our sisters. Is that what the Lord wants for his people? No. That's why God said we should not seek to have peace with them. We don't. Oh God. That ye may be strong. That ye may be what? Strong. That's how you become strong, black man. We always ask ourselves, well, why are we in the condition that we're in? Why are we always the last, the, the last hired in the first fire? Why are we always at the bottom of the totem pole? The answer to that is right here in this Bible. It's just that we've been learning it from disgusting Christian pastors who want nothing to do but to rape and rob our people. The truth is, in order for us to be strong, we have to separate from America. We have to separate from our oppressor. We have to separate from every evil thing in this place. They teach, sorry, sir. Spiritually, we have to separate. I'm not telling you to get on uh, 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 on Spirit Airlines and fly to Zimbabwe. Fly to Timbuktu. You know what I'm saying? Fly to Osaka. That's not what, the, what I'm telling you to do. The Bible is telling our people to separate their spirit from America. Again, how do you do that? By saying, I'm not celebrating the slaughter of my Native American Indian brothers. I'm not selling a uh, uh, crack cocaine and fits it all to fellow blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. That's how you separate from this place spiritually, man. It's not about traveling somewhere. It's about taking your love out of America, man. Right. Read it again. Oh, God. Moreover, ye shall never seek to have peace with them, huh? that ye may be strong and eat the good things of the land. Eat the good things of the land, you understand? Imagine an oppressor, you understand, telling me, you know, God is love and you got to, you know, love and hate is so wrong. You can't, he's got to be friends with everybody. Well, let me ask you a question. What did the oppressor do when Osama bin Laden rammed those seven, Boeing 747s into the Twin Towers? Did, uh, did, he, did he send over his best huggers and kissers? Did he say, we're going to go over there, we're going to shower uh, Al-Qaeda with peace. We're going to shower the Taliban with peace and love and rainbows and be friends with them. No, they clipped up and got every piece of weaponry they can find, and they turned Iraq and Iran and Saudi Arabia into a damn dust bowl. That's what they turned it into. That's what America did. America didn't say, oh, well, we got to go love them so much because they're our enemies. So, black man, why do you got to love everybody? Why, why can't we go against our enemies? In the ISUPK and the Commander General Yohana, we're not going to just follow the program. We're not going to be good slaves in this place. We're going to follow this Bible and tell you that the oppressor is the devil the Bible speaks of. That's right. And we're going to separate from him spiritually, you understand? Right. Read it from the top. It's the book of First Edges, chapter 8, verse 85. Moreover, ye shall never seek to have peace with them. Why should we have peace with people that lock babies in cages at the border of Texas and Mexico? Right, right. Why should we seek to have peace with, 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 with a people who would get on a, on horseback and whip our Haitian brothers' backs 
when they're just trying to get a better life. I thought this was the land of the free and the home of the brave. But everyone, we all turn a blind, blind eye at that. No one wants to talk about what America does, but a black man in America is considered what? The biggest criminal. Nobody wants to live near the so-called black Hispanic or native Indian man. They look at us like what? Like we the biggest drug dealers? Ain't no bigger drug dealer than America. Ain't no bigger murderer than America. Ain't no bigger mass murderer and rapist and every criminal thing you can think of than, than the so-called oppressor. Period. You can't beat him at his own game, black man. You keep trying to beat him at his own game and we keep failing. You can sell all the drugs we want until you're blue in the face. It will never fix black people. It will only destroy us further and further, which is why God told us to separate from these things. Finish that. That ye may be strong and eat the good things of the land, and that ye may leave the inheritance of the land unto your children. That's why we don't have an inheritance to give to our children. Why? Because we've given everything we got to America. America, they got all the inheritance. They have all the land, they have all the resources, and what do we do? What do we do? We continue to give everything we got. Again, all of our love and appreciation to America, and we get nothing for it. So-called black people in America, we've been here for over 400 years. But guess what? We didn't get no black hate bill when, when they, when they, when they uh, killed Alton Sterling. We didn't get a black hate bill when they killed Sandra Bland and Trayvon Martin. We didn't get a black hate bill. But as soon as uh, uh, the so-called Chinese man, you know what I mean? As soon as he go through a little something, he got an Asian hate bill immediately. And he doesn't even vote. Go look up the numbers. Nobody votes in America more than black people. No one is more patriotic to America than black people and Hispanics. And we got nothing for it. Separates itself from this place. Drop that, give me, um, give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Give me Ecclesiastes three and eight. You understand? Why, why are we considered a hate group in this place? Why, because we talk on the mic, I don't want we talk, we talk on a mic in the middle of, you know what I'm saying, downtown D.C., and, and, and we read in the Bible. How, how threatening can we be? We're not reading some horrible, you know, a manifesto like the oppressor has. The oppressor writes a manifesto about, oh, we need to do this, and well, America needs to get back, make America great again. We don't do that. We're reading that in the same book your grandmother got on the mantelpiece. We're reading that in the same book you talked about in your Christian church all day long. Here's the difference. In your Christian church, you never read it. You just listen to Pastor Porkchop or Pastor Joe Willie sing a song and do a little chuck and jive down the aisle, but he never read the book. We're actually reading the book, and I know it's shocking to you, but these are the true words of God being brought to you by the true prophets of God in the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. Give me a Ecclesiastes 3 and verse, uh, start at verse 1 real quick. Read verse 1. It's the book of, it's the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3, verse 1. Ask Pastor Porkchop why he never read this one. Read. To everything. To what? To everything. To everything. Go ahead. There is a season. To everything there is a season. Go ahead. And a time to every purpose. And there's a time to every purpose. You understand? That means there's a time for everything. Now drop down. Give me verse. Uh, start of verse 7. Come, come. Verse 7. A time to win. And a time to sow. Verse 8, Salaki. Read verse 8. A time to love. A time to what? A time to love. A time to what? A time to love. Meaning what? There is a time to love. There's a time when you're supposed to give your love and your appreciation and supposed to give your adulation. There's a time for that, black man, Hispanic and Native Indian man. We don't. And a time to hate. A time to what? Hate. No, hate ain't in the Bible. Hate. A time to do what? A time to hate. Bible says there's a time to hate, man. Right. right now is the time for us as blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians to love each other. It's time for us to love each other. Come together. You understand? It's also what? It's a time for us to hate the wicked things of America, man. Right. It's a time for us to hate Christmas, hate Thanksgiving, to hate Father's Day and Mother's Day, man. Some black woman sitting up there talking about, yeah, well, I was your mother and your father. What kind of foolishness is this? What kind of confusion is being pushed in this place? We're not supposed to be just some, you know, and, 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 and everybody knows it. Everybody knows that some man that stands up there being so friendly all the time, what they say nowadays, I'm sure, man, I'm a little old. They say now what? You got to stay dangerous, right? 
You gotta stay dangerous, why? Because life is real. Life ain't always gonna be friendly. Life ain't always gonna be beautiful. So what kind, how can a man protect his family if he's always the good guy? If he's always so happy? And he's always so willing to just be a friendly uh, unicorn and a lily? That man is useless. A real man can only protect his family if he has the ability to be what? To be dangerous at times. To be strong at times. So guess what? You need to love your people. But you know what black people need to start hating? We need to start hating drugs and alcoholism. We need to start hating pedophilia. You, we, we've been taught in the Christian church that being a, a hero means always, you know, being together with things and bringing things together. This Bible shows you the truth. If you want to be a real hero, guess what? You have to hate pedophilia. You have to hate child molestation. You have to hate the things that destroy our people. But in the Christian church, you're taught to, you know, it's all good. We'll be all right. It's okay. We're all friends. We're all human. And then you do what? You sit at that same Thanksgiving table with that uncle that molested you. With that uncle that you know molested everybody in the family. You know how dirty and disgusting he is, but in the name of trying to be, you know, cordial and, and be friends and, and be happy and be Christian, you'll sit at that table with him. Not in the ISUPK under command of General Yohana. We're the true heroes for blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, and we ain't sitting at no table with no damn disgusting pedophiles and child molesters, man. There's a time and a season to love and a time to hate. Read it again. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. A time of what? Peace. A time of war. A time of war. There's a time where you gotta go to battle. Me and my brothers and my Ottawaian, we doing it right now. We going to war right now. Why? Because if the ISUPK doesn't do it, then no one will. Yeah, Babylon is falling.